Hey guys, this look familiar? Well, this is uh, the owner of those four GT40X aluminum heads I did up. And we did some testing with uh, this blueprint, which is a, a Performer RPM air gap copy. And we actually compared it right on set of heads with a 650 carb, nice carb, I forget what it was, nice annular discharge carb. And uh, we put the two manifolds up to head, head to head, and the blueprint came out on top by a few CFM. The, uh, the Edelbrock had an anom anomaly right in the plenum, and I think that's what made the difference. Now, the owner of this crunched some numbers and said, hey, I, I think I want you to do some work to this intake. So we're going to do a little. Uh, we're going to do a little work to this intake. I don't think I'm going to go off the deep end like I did with the uh, the Shelby Cobra, but according to my friend Bill, this is a way better design, and I believe him because I mean it's a modern, real high rise with nice curves. Okay, it should be it should be pretty easy to get some power out of this. As, as a matter of fact, when we look at the flow numbers of just the manifold completely stock, it beats most performer RPMs. Uh, usually they only go 220. And the lowest flow number we got on it was 224. Highest was 238. 240. 240.8. Not bad. Can we do better than that? Well, we're going to try. Now, when I do, uh, I'm going to test this. by itself and see what I can do, see if I can balance it best I can. And then we're going to test it back on the head. He brought the head back over so we can see if it makes a difference because when we put it on the head, the head flowed pretty decent and I can't find the correct last flow sheet. This is the third cut. I know I had more cuts than that. I want to say we, we hit like 250. Or pretty close to 250 with that head. Maybe it was 252 with a flow ball. That's what it was. But it was very close to this. All right, mid 240s. Now that head only went. All right, completely stock. It was only 225. So we got a decent amount up on it. I mean, the exhaust actually picked up quite a bit. Right, our exhaust here is only 138. Here we're more like 180. Okay, so we take this. Pretty close to these flow numbers, and we bolt the intake and the carb on. What do we get? Okay, so we can see right here. This is the blueprint manifold, right? It's got a 194 with a back cut. This is number four runner. This is number five runner. One is better than the other because one is an upper and one is a lower. Okay. Top left is number one right so this is number four top right is number four and then over here this is number five the lower plenum usually gets fed a little bit better so it flowed a little better which makes perfect sense to me okay so we go from let's say he puts a decent sized street cam in at almost 600 we go from 235 to 206 ouch over here we're 214 now, it is a small carb. I said I would test it with my 770 and see if we pick up. But we're going to do uh, we're going to go from top to bottom on this now. I actually want you guys to take a good look at this manifold what it looks like stock and then see how I screw it up. Okay, the plenum looks quite nice, you know, nice and deep. Is it deeper than the Cobra Shelby? No, this plenum is downright small compared to the finished Cobra Shelby. And the way the runners run, okay, this runner runs right through here. You're not, probably not going to be able to expand that out a huge amount on that, uh, that plenum. But remember, that's the side that actually flows better. The harder work is on the upper plenum. And it already has a nice radius cast right into it. So there's no easy low-hanging fruit on this. Some of the things that I do like about this 
the way the plenum actually kicks out and gets wider, okay? That's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, can we widen this short side and get a little more out of it? I'll have to take a look and see if that is something that we think it'll work on this. I am not, I'm not positive taking a quick look at it. But if we look overall, right, we've got nice, nice curves. Now this is quite a steep curve, right? This way and this way. Now, let's take a quick look at the uh, Cobra Sh Shelby right next to it and see what they look like. All right, this one is up on stands and the Cobra Shelby is right on the bench. You can see how huge that uh, plenum is after I did all that work to the Cobra Shelby. And you can see how the runner design is laid out quite differently, right? Our upper, our upper H here, they made this a shorter runner, right? And they made this a longer runner, so they are closer together. Here, we, they made this a very long runner, this a very short runner. It's a different way to think about doing things. Uh, overall, this, this is a way better design. Now, does that mean we can't get good power out of this design? No, it doesn't mean that at all. It can be done. It, like, uh, like my friend uh, Bill said, it's easier with this design. He would know. Okay, the air gap, the air being able to go underneath the runners, that does add a few horsepower. We're talking about probably two or three at max because it does keep the, uh, the upper runners a little bit cooler. Not a huge difference, believe me. Okay, lower runners, you can see, come straight off the plenum. Now, this has got a solid bottom. We can't see those bottom runners. Okay, let's take a look at how it did completely stock. Number one was 234. Number two, 224.1. Number three, 240. By far our highest flowing runner, which is a bottom right runner. Straight down and across. Interesting, right? Uh, number four is 229.6, number five is 230.7, number six is 228.8, number seven is 238.6. Let's see how that one runs. Number seven, and yeah, number seven is this one, right? Take a look at its approach angle to the head. It's got a great approach angle, right, from the upper, from the upper H. Approach angle does make a huge difference, guys. And three, we got 232.2. Overall, not bad as far as being even. It would be, let's do a quick calculation on that. Okay, I'm going to say this now. It's going to be tough for me to get them that even after I do all my modifications. But we're going to give it a try. Um, actually, what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to rough this all out and try to get all the low-hanging fruit I can and see where we are, and then we'll do some tweaking. And notice the plenum has got a short notch. It's only about a quarter of an inch deep. Are we going to modify that? I guess it would depend how we do porting the manifold first, and then we can do some testing with some spacers and some bigger carbs and stuff like that and see where we are. All right, guys, just a quick look uh, where we're starting at. That was an impressive bang. I wonder what that was. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Have a good night.